Hey, YouTube family and GN subs, this is Umberto from Grey Law TV, and today we're going to talk about this new citizenship test. Don't be afraid, though. You can pass it. I'm going to give you some great tips on, you know, things that I tell my clients so you can pass any exam, this new one or the old one. So listen until the end so I can give you the tip on how to pass your exam for citizenship. For those of you who are new to the channel, what I generally do is I give you an update on current immigration news today, the new citizenship exam. All right, then what we do is we go to my legal cases in my office, real time, what's happening with immigration. No one really does that. Uh, but I give you a sense of where immigration is today, not policy memoranda that tell you how long it's processing. I'm gonna tell you exactly what's going on with these cases in real time. So let's get at it. So for US citizenship, amongst other requirements, there is a test of government and history, and you have to pass that test of government and history in order to become a US citizen. So the old exam, there were 100 questions, okay? Uh, at the time of the interview, it's an oral exam. They only asked you 10 questions and you had to get six of 10 correct. The new exam, there's 128 questions that you need to study, and they will ask you 20 questions. You need to get 12 of 20 correct. Still an oral exam, okay? Now, this exam is all about government and history. There are certain questions in the new exam that are just a bit nuanced, okay? For example, who do senators and congressmen represent? The answer is they represent citizens of a state or counties, as opposed to they represent people of the state or counties. Nuance, we can make an argument that that's actually not true, but it is what it is. Now, some of the questions are actually wrong. Um, this is one question, I'll put it up on, on the screen here. What are the rights of everyone in the United States? Now, there's a list, you have to get three of these uh, questions and answer them correctly. As you see, they only provide six answers, okay? One is the right to bear arms, which is actually not true. Some felons can't bear arms, but that's a small nuance. But what they don't include is the important stuff in that list. You have a right to due process, right? You have a right to equal protection. You have right to counsel. You have right to an attorney. So some of the answers, which would be correct, are not included in their list. And I wonder uh, if during the exam you indicate, well, I have a right to counsel, would that be correct or incorrect? I mean, it's a correct answer, but in terms of the exam, I wonder if the examiner will mark you wrong for that answer. The new exam, and I'm going to put a link in the description box where you can actually go to and get the new exam, the questions and answers. Uh, the new exam are only for applications received by USCIS after December 1st, 2020. So if your application was received prior to December of 2020, then you're going to have the old exam, okay? You're going to have the, the, the shorter version, 10 questions, you got to get 6 of 10 correct. If it's after that date, you have the new exam, 12 questions correct out of 20, okay? Again, now, it doesn't matter whether or not you're going to have the new or the old exam. What I'm going to do is give you a tip on how you can pass either of those exams, okay? Um, there is talk about the new administration um, going back to the old exam because this new exam, it's a little bit onerous, uh, not so fair, but in any event, bear with me. So this is the tip that I give to my clients, okay? You wanna pass the exam? You need to understand how our government works. Broader picture as opposed to the smaller picture. Key, there are three co-equal branches of government. They are equal. One is not higher than the other one. That's the most important part. And we have a system of what we call checks and balances. Okay, Each of the three branches of government, they check each other. So let's talk a little bit about the three branches, right? You have the executive branch. That's the president. You have the legislative branch. That's Congress. They make laws. They legislate. Okay. Um, then you have the judiciary, that's the Supreme Court of the U.S. and the judges. They interpret what the law is. So currently, as you know, there's an impeachment trial going on. Let's talk about how each of these three branches check each other, okay? So 
the executive branch did something that was wrong. You had the congressional branch, the legislative branch, vote to impeach the executive. Now we have a trial where the judiciary is overseeing. Generally in these impeachment hearings, you have the Senate and you have the judiciary overseeing to determine whether or not what the executive did was a high crime or misdemeanor. So that's how each branch of government checks one another. If the legislator writes a law that's unconstitutional, the judiciary determines basically that that law is not constitutional, it's not valid. That's why we don't have dictators, that's why we don't have you know, governments being overthrown because each of these co-equal branches check each other, all right? Again, executive is the president, right? You have the legislator, Congress, you have senators, 100 of them, you have congressmen, 435 of them, right? And then you have the judiciary, okay? Now, all of this comes together with the supreme law of the land, and that is the Constitution. You need to get the Constitution. It's not so long, and you need to read it. So if you understand this concept and you read the Constitution, it really doesn't matter what questions they have on government and history, you are going to pass. Trust me, folks, okay? Look at this video a couple times, listen to it, and uh, hey, good luck with that. Now, I have a bunch of questions in the comment section regarding the travel ban, the family travel ban. Is it lifted? What's going on with it? So I put a link in the description, the new proclamation by Biden that came out the end of January, okay? Let's take a peek at it. It says the travel ban does not apply to family petitions. Very clearly, that's talking about sibling petitions, fourth preference petitions. It's talking about family second preference petitions, okay? So it doesn't apply to family cases. The ban is lifted. And if you have a family member that's waiting for an interview at the U.S. consulate, then, you know, go ahead and make an inquiry. Get them here. Be proactive. Finally, a bit of good news for my real cases here in the office. So previously, um, before COVID, before, you know, interviews being waived, etc., there were certain cases. I had uh, a filmmaker from India who had the appointment here in the U.S. for the green card went to the appointment. At the time of the appointment, the category had retrogressed. So what immigration did in those instances would, they would adjudicate the case, they would send it to Texas to wait for the priority date to become current. So we kept extending his work permit. He's legal, lawful in the United States. So finally, when the category became current, what I did, I made an inquiry to immigration right away. You know me, always proactive, right? Made an inquiry, guess what, last week, Approval came in, all right? Approval came in without any additional documents, no you know, further requests for evidence, et cetera. And it's been about a year you know, when the, when the category retrogressed. So um, that is great news. Hey, YouTube family, thanks so much for watching. Click below, like, and subscribe. Go to our Frequently Asked Questions. Great videos on there. And make sure you subscribe. There's a lot of questions that Courtney and I are answering, and we can only get to a few of them. All right, so give preference to the subscribers, all right? So subscribe, and uh, we'll see you soon.